In this week's tour portion, Jacob has a dream about angels ascending and descending on a ladder that reached from heaven down to earth. It made a huge impression on him and has occupied the minds of many other people for thousands of years. Many years later, after the time of Jacob, Yeshua told his disciple Nathanael that he would see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. How did Yeshua understand Jacob's dream and then use it to explain how he is the bridge between God and man? Let's take a look in this week's 5-Minute Torah. Welcome back, Torah Tribe. You're watching the channel that connects disciples of Yeshua to the eternal Torah of God. This week's Torah portion is Vayetze, Genesis 28, 10 through 32, 3, or verse 2 in a non-Jewish publicized Bible. And here are the three things that you need to know. Need to... Number one, Jacob's dream. A Torah portion begins with Jacob leaving Beersheba and setting out toward Padan Aram in order to search for a bride from among Abraham's family. On the way, however, he spends the night in Luz, a city he ends up calling Bethel, which means house of God. Well, during the night, Hashem appears to Jacob in a dream. He sees angels ascending and descending on a ladder extending into heaven. In this dream, the Lord appears to Jacob and makes him a promise. He says, Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is Genesis 28, 14. When he woke up in the morning, he knew that God was calling him just as he had called his father Isaac and his grandfather Abraham. His relationship with God became personal and real at that point, and he spent the rest of his life pursuing him. Number two, Jacob marries Rachel and Leah. We all know the story. Jacob falls in love with Rachel, and her father Laban says that he can marry her if he works for him for seven years. The seven years go by like the blink of an eye for Jacob, and he finally gets to marry the woman of his dreams. However, on the wedding night, Laban pulls the old switcheroo on Jacob, substituting Leah in the place of Rachel. When Jacob confronts him about it the next day, Laban says that the older sister, Leah, had to be married before the younger, Rachel. But he would gladly give him a two-for-one deal if he would only agree to work another seven years for him. Jacob agrees and ends up marrying both Rachel and Leah within a week of one another. This sets the stage for sibling rivalry with each sister competing for Jacob's love and attention. And number three, Jacob's sons. Because Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah, God blessed Leah with children first. Soon, however, Rachel enters the competition by giving Jacob her handmaid, Bilhah, to have children on her behalf. Leah stops bearing children but wants to stay in the game, so she gives Jacob her handmaid, Zilpah, to continue the competition. Finally, God shows pity on Rachel and gives her a son and eventually one more a while later. But here are the sons of Jacob according to their birth order and who gave birth to them in this Torah portion. Reuben, who was born to Leah. Simeon, born to Leah. Levi, born to Leah. Judah, born to Leah. Dan, born to Bilhah. Naphtali, born to Bilhah. Gad, born to Zilpah. Asher, born to Zilpah. Issachar, born to Leah. Zebulun, to Leah. And then Joseph, to Rachel. Oh Hanukkah, oh Hanukkah, come light the menorah. Let's have a party, we'll all dance the whole... Oh, hi. Sorry, I just get in the mood for Hanukkah. It's less than a month away. It's the time of the year that we're gearing up for eight days of crazy fun. We'll gather with friends and family to light the menorah, sing some songs, eat some great food, and talk about the miracles that God has done for the children of Israel and for us. If you want to have a great family experience for Hanukkah this year, be sure to pick up your copy of Eight Lights, my Hanukkah how-to and devotional that will make each night of Hanukkah a night to remember. So if you want to have fun and learn to be a better disciple of our Master Yeshua, be sure to check it out using the links in the show notes below. This week's Torah commentary is called Stairway to Heaven and it comes from my book, 5-Minute Torah, Volume 3. This week's Torah portion begins with one of the most mysterious and little understood events recorded in the Torah. When Jacob spent the night in what he later calls Bet El, he had a curious dream charged with spiritual significance. And he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. 
And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set upon the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Genesis 28, verses 11 and 12. In Jacob's dream, he saw a ladder stretching from heaven to earth, and angels were ascending and descending on it. Although he was puzzled by this imagery, Jacob realized that it held spiritual significance and determined that he had come to a place of holiness. As it says, Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Genesis 28, verses 16 and 17. Because of what he had seen in his dream, Jacob called the place Beit El, or Bethel, or house of God. He declared that it was not only the house of God, but also some sort of portal between heaven and earth where angels could come and go from one realm to the other. From this, we can see the importance of the holy temple in Jerusalem. While it stood, the house of God functioned as the gate of heaven, connecting heaven and earth. When Yeshua was calling Nathanael to follow him as one of his disciples, he told him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is John chapter 1, verse 51. Well, Where did Yeshua get this imagery of the heavens opening and the angels of God ascending and descending? None other than our current Torah portion. But how is he able to make this bold claim that angels will ascend and descend upon him? Although the connection is difficult to make in English, it's more apparent when we read it in Hebrew. It seems obvious in the English what the angels are moving upon. It says that the angels were, quote, ascending and descending on it, meaning the latter. In the original Hebrew, however, non-gender pronouns such as it don't exist. Like Spanish and most other languages, everything has a gender. So when the Torah says the angels went up and down on it, we can just as easily read it as on him. It is the same pronoun in Hebrew, the word bo. Were the angels ascending and descending on it or him? A Jewish answer to that question is yes. This is why Yeshua was able to allude back to this Torah portion to refer to himself as the one on whom the angels will ascend and descend. He is the stairway or the gateway between heaven, God, and earth, man. The Midrash relates a teaching by Rabbi Aha in which he expounds on this passage, saying that God told Jacob, quote, This gate will be opened for many righteous men like yourself. This comes from Bereshit Rabbah 69.7. He predicted a time that would come in which many would pass through the gate and make the spiritual journey from earth to heaven. Yeshua taught, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. This is John chapter 10, verse 9. Through Yeshua, the gate to God has been opened to the masses. A stairway to heaven has been opened to all who will heed his call. Yeshua also takes our prayers straight to the Father and intercedes on our behalf, according to Romans 8, 34. So through our attachment to him, we can ascend with the angels to the presence of the Almighty and descend back down to earth bringing with us a portion of the divine in order to illuminate this dark world. When Yeshua walked this earth, his disciples were able to see this angelic exchange. May we take advantage of this opportunity and catch a glimpse of the angels ascending and descending in our day as well. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my latest video in my series, Five Books That Changed My Life, if you haven't seen it already. Or you can check out my video on last week's tour portion entitled The Ancient Paths. I'll see you again this Friday with another Messianic insight into the eternal Torah of God. Blessings from Amet HaTorah.